Alright guys, so I don't remember exactly where I left you guys off on uh, last video, because um, it's been a bit, it's been a while, but this time around I'm going to show you guys how to create a map system, a very basic map system where you can enter it or access it through your menu, and depending on which room you are, or currently in, it will change back and forth um, between those. So yeah, as you'll see here in just a second. Whoops. Damn enemy. It does go back and forth between those two rooms. Uh, I'm going to have to change that or fix that. Alright, let's get started then. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new scene. Hit other, and then we just want a node. This is just going to be something that we can um, access. I'm going to kill that map hood. Next thing we're going to need to do is add a tile map. In fact, we're actually going to need to add two tile maps. This one is going to be for the background, and the next one is going to be for the actual map rooms that we're going to create here in a second. Um, we're also going to need a button, and we're going to need a sprite. And this is just going to show the player's location. So let's actually name that as player location short and then I'm going to save this in scenes call it map hood doesn't really matter okay so first things first let's create the background for this I think I have them under mappy boys yeah we do but no uh, something to note about this I recently found out is if your sprites are too small uh, Godot won't be able to select them, so just make sure that they're at least 16 pixels by 16 pixels uh, when you're creating your own uh, tile maps. Anyway, that's just something I learned. Just gonna quickly do this. In fact, I'm probably just gonna edit this port portion out. Okay, now that's done. We're gonna create this piece here, which is gonna be for the map rooms. Put new tiles, tile set, drag and drop this in, and same thing as before. Um, no, nah, I'll, I'll tell you that later. Okay, and then we're going to have this button over here. And we're just going to, whoops, always and forever. I'm just going to move this down here somewhere. And I need to size it up. I believe this one is called Exit. Whoops. If I can freaking spell, holy crap. What the hell's going on? I said, what the hell's going on? There we go. Sheesh. Okay. All of that's done. The next thing I want to do is go into the menu that we created earlier. And I need to add a button to this as well. Whoops. And I want this button to be, whoops, I swear, right here. And we're just going to call this map. Okay. So what these are going to do is this button here is going to allow us to call this map here. And then this button is going to allow us to go back to our main menu here. So which one should I code first? You know what? Let's code. Let's code this menu button first since it's super easy. So let's add a script. We're going to call this map button. And we're just going to have a couple of uh, functions in here. Or oh, not functions, a couple of variables and one function. So we need an on ready variable. And this is going to be called get map. Because that's exactly what it's going to be doing. And then we need to preload and get that map HUD that we had just created. And then after that, um, I need to actually add a signal to this. 
So let's go to our node here, signals, and we need to go for the button press. So whenever this button is pressed, make sure it's connected to the button, it's gonna do something. And in this particular case, I just wanted to grab that map and add it to the scene itself. So I need to create a variable, load map, and that's gonna be equal to get map dot instantiate. And then after that, we can add the child. Add child, and that child is load map. Okay, beautiful. And that's pretty much all you're gonna need for this button here. Um, I'm just gonna see if it works. If I did this correctly, I'm gonna hit the menu button and I click on this. Beautiful, okay, cool. Um, whoops, looks like I didn't draw it big enough. So I'm just gonna fix that right now. And we're gonna start working on the script for the map itself. So let me, give me a second here while I look and see what it is that I did. Okay, so what I did, for the map rooms, I added a script to this. So I'm just gonna call map rooms that. And then I added a couple of variables. So let's do that right now. On ready variables, at on ready variable. And then this is gonna be map position. And this is just gonna be where the player is at. In fact, instead, I'm just gonna say map player map position. And then we'll need to get parent. Again, if I can spell, and then I need to get node. And the node I want to get is uh, the sprite, which is player location or player loc. Okay, beautiful. So what this is gonna be is this sprite, which I don't have actually just yet. We're just gonna use the uh, bullet sprite for this one. Let's just go to bullets. Just gonna throw that right in here. Beautiful. So what we're doing is we're just gonna grab this sprite here and we're gonna change this position to be equal to one of these spots depending on what room we're in. So that's all that's doing. And then the next thing I need to do is I'm actually going to just copy and paste this. Save us some time, yay! All right. So I'm gonna create a brand new on ready variable, get map tiles, and then get used cells zero. Okay, so what this is doing is I'm creating a variable called get map tiles, and what it's it's gonna do is it's gonna do exactly what its name says. It's gonna get the map tiles of this node here. So remember, this node here is a, t is a tile map. So it's going through, um, it's gonna go through all of the map, or uh, it's gonna go through all of these the sprites that we have laid out here. In this particular case, we only have two, but it's gonna go through all of those. That's what this get use cells is, and then it's gonna figure out what layer it's on. We only have one layer, so it's gonna be the first layer, and remember, programming starts at zero. So it's gonna be the first layer of zero. And this get use cell is a function that's built into the tile map. So that's all that's doing. I hope I explained that, that, that well enough. All right, and then after that, uh, once this thing is called, get a ready function, meaning the second is put into the, uh, to the game. Okay, the next portion that we need to do is we need to calculate we need to, to calculate these tiles into pixels because of what I just showed you. It's in Godot, it's using um I don't know what this debug is, probably an error somewhere. Okay, yeah, I have no, I haven't used it yet. I'm gonna I'm about to. Hold on. Okay. Um, anyway, what I was saying is um, the tile maps use a different um, system of locating itself than the sprites do. And if you go here, and if you look up this right here, the sprite, and you look at its transforms, you can see that it says zero, zero. But if we were to move it down here, you will see it says 88 and 104, which, where is the, uh, It says 88 and 104, which you can see here that none of these are that particular number because it's using a different system. So all we're gonna do is calculate um, those tile positions 
into something that the the sprite can understand so that way it, it throws it in the proper location so I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you I have no idea how this works <laughs> I've read documentation on it and I still don't quite understand all I know is that it works so what you're gonna want to do is get map to local and again map to local is a built-in function of tile map and we're going to get our tile maps or map tiles and then inside there we haven't created it just yet but we're gonna put a variable in here and that variable is gonna tell us what tile we're gonna be in so I'm gonna to go to player inventory and I don't think I actually need these here I don't need this one I don't think anyway, um, we're just gonna create a variable called current room in our player inventory you can put this in anything that's a global script um, but in this particular particular instance I just put it in the player the players inventory because it's already auto loaded and I don't have to do it again so I created this variable I create this variable current room and I put it at zero so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to player inventory dot current room okay what's going on here player inventory oh it's gotta be player inventory derp bitty derp derp okay that's like that okay player inventory current room okay I know hold on crap I swear okay so we're going to play inventory current room zero so all it's saying is this this get used tile uh, get used cells is a list so it has a whole bunch of, of elements in it screw it. it has a whole bunch of elements in it and all we want to do is get the element of one of the rooms so in this particular case it's gonna be zero so we're gonna get the very first one here which is these two okay and then after that we want to make sure that our player map position that position again remember this is a sprite is going to be equal to our tile calculation and that should be that and I'm actually going to do ourselves a little favor here this is more like a quality of life type deal I'm just going to create an input here and just say if event dot is action is action pressed and I believe I changed duh to m key I just want to get the parent and then I want it to queue free and all that's going to do is um, it's going to if we ever press the m key while we're in the while this thing is active it's just going to delete it and then it's going to send us back to the game that's all it's doing okay and I think that might be it for that. So what we need to do next is go into our portals and we need to create a brand new export variable. Now this one I called it uh, send next room ID and then I, I've made it equal to a number of int. I mean, I guess you could technically go like this, but I'm just gonna keep this simple. And all this is gonna do is when when we enter a portal give me a second here when we enter a portal we want to send the id of that location um, back to the tile map or back to our map that way it changes this this uh, icon to either or of one of these two things so go back to our script here go back to our portal so we're gonna create this here and then every time we enter the portal we want to make sure that the players current room is changed to whatever this export variable is so since we already did this or I did this in a previous uh, recording and I had to scrap it because it sucked um, I just changed it to one because remember this is it has to be the, ne the next room that it's going to 
and then in this one here I send it to the original room that we previously were at which was zero and if I did this correctly and I think that I did I should yes up here here okay the exit button doesn't work I'll I'll add that here in a second but yeah it should work beautiful beautiful and if Back here, it should send me back. It does. Beautiful. All right, let's fix the exit button. And you also saw that I had the um, whatever the hell that thing's called, the missiles show up. So let's go to our menu HUD here, and we just need to add some functionality to this button. And what did I add to this button? Exit to menu. Oh, that's it? That's all I added, really? All right, well, let's add this. We're going to call this the exit map exit. And all I'm going to do is, is create a signal when the button's pressed. Connect. Make sure it connects to the button. And then all I did was control C. V. Get parent queue free. And all that did was it just deletes, like I said before, it deletes this crap. That way we can go back to our original our original menu. Okay. Now let's see if I can fix. Uh you know what, actually before that? There is something that I did before, um, or I, I guess I should say this, there's something I should warn you um, while I was messing with this. When you are creating your tile map for this, keep in mind that Godot doesn't know which room you want as uh, point, point one and point two and point three and so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. If you are to do this, Godot only keeps track of... How can I put this? You need to be mindful of, of which tiles you're placing down first and which ones you're placing down last. Um, because Godot isn't going to be able to tell that this is supposed to be room 1 and this is supposed to be room two. It doesn't care. So let's say I drew this one here first, right? And then let's say it's like, oh, well, I want a room in front of it first, so that should be room one, right? As you'll soon see. You see, it's backwards. Um, the reason for that is because we put this map down, or I put this map down first, and then I put this one here. So as far as Godot is concerned, this is the first room, and this is the second room. So that's just something to be, to be mindful of. This is the best way I could figure out how to do it. If you can figure out a better way, that's great. But, um, yeah, so if you want room one to be room one, it should be the first thing you click, and then second room, third room, fourth room. Otherwise you're gonna have some weirdness going on where you know this is gonna be room one and this is gonna be room two so just just something to be mindful of um, also I was able to get this thing to scroll um, I'm just going to quickly add that in right now to show you so I added a control no I added a scroll controller or container, right? Yes, yeah, scroll container. And then I added to that scroll container a, I believe a horizontal box. H box, something like that. Yeah. Like this. And then I just put this tile map inside this. And this. Now I don't remember, I don't think this is going to screw up with, with anything. Oh, it looks like it did. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, so... 
if you're gonna go this route, just be mindful. Let me see if I can figure out. Oh, okay, it's the wrong one. It's this one here. And it should be this. If I'm not mistaken, is it the middle or is it something else? Am I missing here? Give me a second here. It's in layouts, yes. Clip content, yes. And then I did 256, whoa. 256. And then this I did, what, 48? Okay, so I'm just going to show you this right now. You are able to scroll your map. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so I need to create like freaking three of these things. That way I can get the parent, which is this, then get the parent again, and then get the parent again, and then finally find the damn node. Okay, anyway, going back to what I was saying, um, you can scroll. Um, with this, but just be mindful that this is the scroll of uh, your ability to scroll is determined by the custom minimum sizes here, and you're gonna also have to calculate. Um, you're gonna also gonna have to calculate your position and then the size of the map itself. So yeah, so you, I would have to draw. If you were going to do this, you would have to draw a background all the way down here. That way it um, covers up. And then two, you would also have to calculate um, the difference between um, your scrolls as well. Which is why I didn't do it. I, I just figured this would be a lot simpler. So, so yeah, uh, that's a simple map. Obviously, this isn't perfect. Um, for one thing, it's only one map here, so you'll have to figure out a way to, let's say you weren't doing like Super Metroid or um, Metroid Fusion where you had like different sections or whatnot, this is only gonna show one map. So you'll, you'll have to figure out how to add extra maps for those, those things. Um, I am going to delete these containers here because I don't want them. I'm just gonna be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, uh, yeah, I don't want them, delete. Delete, and then in my script here, I'm just going to do this. And then I'm just gonna control C. Add this here, and then get rid of all the extra get parents. I only should only need to do it once now. And that should, that should fix that little problem. Put a map here. Let me see something here. Yeah, beautiful. Map. Okay, good, it works. All right, so. Okay, I just realized I never showed you how to get rid of the, whoops. To get rid of the um, upgrade icons when you hit your map like this. Uh, wait, I'll get this right here. And you see it appears here, and then it's supposed to disappear when you're in here. I completely forgot. Sorry, I'm gonna add that right now. So the first thing you want to do for that is you want to go into your map button, and you want to create a new signal called in map, and then you want to emit that signal whenever um, the map button is pressed. So whenever this button is pressed, it's gonna fire off that signal. And then what you want to do in your menu is you want to create a new function. Uh, to hide those upgrades, so self.hide. All it's gonna do is just take this entire overlay and hide it. And then after that, you're gonna want to get node button, which is this button here, the map button. I guess I should have named that differently, but whatever. And then you wanna connect to that signal in map and then the function that you want it to connect to or fire off when you collect that, that signal is that particular function that you made. And then that should get rid of that. I think that's all I did for that. I don't remember adding anything else. Yeah, looks good. Okay, yeah, that that's all. Sorry about that. <laughs> now back to where I put this. So yeah, there is a super basic, very simple map. I hope I explained things clearly. If I didn't, you know, just fire off at the comments, and I'll uh, help you out if you don't. If there's anything you don't understand.
Okay, I think the next time what I'm going to do is the enemy AI. And then we're just going to show you how to clean up your code. That way it's not so messy because the player script is over encumbered right now with code that it honestly doesn't need. Okay, well, with that being said, thank you for watching and farewell, my children.